So we're going to move on now to one of our last topics, uh, which I believe you know more about than I do, Tom. Oh boy. Star Trek Section 31 oh movie Lord. officially <laughs> in the works with Michelle Yeoh reprising Star Trek Discovery role. Now, I know very little about this, but I will say mm. this screams to me as something which she was contractually obligated to do, something which was oh, actually wrong. dead, and then something which they resurrected quickly and literally fast-tracked because she's now an Academy Award winner. You're That's what astute. I would say. I would say you're very astute. <laughs> Thank you, good sir. Because, <laughs> yeah, this uh, actually happened pretty quickly. Uh, I got uh, a scoop from a source, and I usually don't run with stuff from singular sources, but this source has been pretty pretty solid. Not, not everything's been 100%, but it's been pretty darn close. Mm. Uh, some things have yet to come to fruition, but it's been pretty, pretty spot on because I, I announced this that, yeah, we're going to get an announcement for Section 31. It seemed to be moving forward. Um, the only thing my source got wrong is they misinterpreted event for movie or they didn't mm. realize that event meant movie. It, they thought event meant like event series because that's what they had been referring to, like Yellowstone yeah. series and stuff like that. So it appears that, yes, it, 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 just as I had uh, been told. They're doing Section 31, and I think you're right, Nate, because the stuff that we had hear, been hearing before was the only reason this is happening is they got mm. her a, a, an executive producer role on this. Um, this thing has been languishing in the background, and CBS really wasn't all that interested in it until Michelle Yao won the Oscar, from what I heard. And the moment mm. that happened, they're like, what's this deal we got with this whole uh, Section 31? Because her folks, from what we had heard for years now, had been telling them, look, if you're not going to get this off the ground... We're going to start getting her signed up for other gigs because she's a very in-demand actress. No mm. more so after the Oscar. So with that, I think this is a make good on whatever contract was left over. Get a movie in and out, done. Plus, it also falls in the whole line of we're not so sure what the hell is going on yet with Star Trek because we're hearing conflicting things over, you know, whether or not Kurtzman is going to retain control over this going forward after his contract is up with Star Trek in 2026. Now, we also heard, though, that his contract had been extended till 2030. That could very well just mean his contract with CBS because this is a very tangled web over at mm. CBS. CBS actually even has some stake in his company's secret hideout. So, like, they're not getting rid of him anytime soon, but... They have been noticing the, the fan reaction to Picard season three. So that's another mm. thing that's throwing the monkey into this wrench. I've got some other things I've heard from him that I, or them or they, whoever it is. Honestly, I don't even know if it's a girl or guy, to be honest with you. <laughs> that was not very smooth. <laughs> and, and to say that basically, yeah, at this point, there's a lot of sh up in the air. They, they are trying yeah. to figure out where to go with this. They thought they knew where they were going. Things changed. Picard three season three did change a few things. Michelle Yeoh winning the Oscar changed a few things. Um, and that was already in effect before Picard season three had even dropped. So yeah. this is something they've been working on. The reason I knew this was coming is because I had gotten word that they had gotten their tax break. Yeah. So that's how I knew this was coming. So, yeah. So it looks well, like Star Trek's going right back to being shit after Picard season three. Uh, yeah, basically. And Kurtzman's definitely involved. So we've got statements here from Michelle Yeoh and Kurtzman. I'm beyond thrilled to return to my Star Trek family and to the role I've loved for so long. Section 31 has been near and dear to my heart since I began the journey of playing Philippa all the way back when this new golden age of Star Trek saw <laughs> I can't fucking say that with a straight face. <laughs> to see her finally get her moment as a dream come true in a year that showed me the incredible power of never giving up on your dreams. Can't wait to share what's in store for you. And until then, live long and prosper, unless Emperor Giorgio uh, decrees otherwise. Now, look, I like Michelle Yeo. I'm happy for her. I honestly, I am. But fuck Star Trek. Anyway, Alex Kurtzman <laughs> jumps in. His statement, it said, all the way back in 2017, before the first season of Star Trek Discovery had even aired, Michelle had the idea to do a spin-off for her character, Philippa Giorgio. Uh, she broke new ground as one of the first two women on screen in the pilot to usher in a new age of Trek. What fucking new ground? There's been women in Star Trek. What are you on about? They're morons. 
Oh. What are you on about? Well, fuck Janeway. Of what the yeah. fuck? Uh, I mean, oh, I mean the, the long list of, of who? females in Star Trek. I, what you, we is could literally going go on? on and on. She broke new ground as one of the first two women on screen in the pilot to usher in a new age of Trek. Oh, she's saying that. He's saying that. Fucking. He's saying he's a dumbass. that there was only two women in the pilot, is what he's saying. But he's framing it as a a record breaker. <laughs> God, what a dickhead. Anyway, sorry. Sorry, ladies and gents. I'm tired and. He's still a moron and he deserves me. our ire. Don't. Uh, yeah. Don't it says, and now, six years later. Star Trek Section 31 finally arrives on the heels of her latest groundbreaking win. So it's all about that, yeah. Yep. Uh, everyone on Team Trek couldn't be more thrilled to have our legendary friend return home to us as we expand our storytelling into new and uncharted corners of the Trekverse. Long live Emperor Giorgio. Long live Michelle Yeoh. You know, Trek wouldn't even exist without Lucille Ball. I, I hate that kind hate of reporting. Alex. I hate Alex Kurtzman. He's such yeah. a dickhead. Well, I know. I don't even know if he likes himself. <sighs> no, he, how can he? I gotta say, he, <laughs> how can you? He's obviously has no self-respect. <laughs> no, I mean, look, you know, <laughs> to, him, to break it down, right? Like Michelle Yeoh, great. She's a great actress. Great to see her getting her, her, you know, her her, her star shining again. Really good. Like, I, honestly, cool. Just. Fuck Alex Kurtzman, fuck Star Trek. This character that she's playing is one of the worst characters in Star Trek history. Like, no. if they would if this was a show about her original version of her, because that's the thing you guys gotta realize if you haven't watched STD, this is a mirror mirror universe version of this character. Right? Yeah. So she's not even supposed to be here. The only reason she was able to stay here is because they fixed her algorithm or some shit. Like it's, it was a stupid what? episode. Yeah, it was like she was like phasing in and out. And they're like, what's wrong? What's wrong with her? Oh, this is not her universe. So she either needs to go back or we need to fix her DNA. And it's like, are you kidding me? This is dumb. Did Just those showrunners ever back. watch Deep Space Nine? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> clearly not. And and I just the whole thing, like I now I'm getting bad Nam flashbacks from fucking STD. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm glad I stopped watching head. that show after the first episode. God damn, man! Like crap. It's gonna be it's gonna be crap, isn't it? Like let's yeah. be honest. So basically, yeah. what we're gonna have here is somebody who shouldn't even be in this universe, who ruthlessly kills people and eats the 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 species that uh, uh, Saru is. Mind you, and from where she's from. <laughs> Running section 31. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she'll have fun, I guess. At least there's that. And the only reason she's still here is because she has this lesbian love relationship with... Uh, with... Uh, uh, the, the, what's her face? Michael Burnham in her universe... And that version's dead or some shit. Like, it, I forgot. Now, I don't care. I apologize. I can't wait for Galaxy Quest. I don't know if we're touching in on that, but... Uh, Mikey Spock. We were, no. Yeah. But, wow. Well, we finally got the announcement for that. We've heard it's coming, but uh, we're finally Good. getting a sequel series to Galaxy Quest. We have real Star Trek coming again. That's right. Well, anyway, Star Trek, you thought that they learned a lesson? They have not. Oh. oh. Not at all. No, no lessons learned. No lessons learned. Paramount. Uh, I know what it sounds like I was making up shit for like five minutes there, but I'm not. No, he's not. That stuff's in the show. Oh god, I hate it so much. It's just so bizarre. I I I don't even I I'm so mad because they you know it's like we know we can make Star Trek. This we had a guy try to make Star Trek out of the worst possible circumstance situation in Picard season three. So it can be done. Yeah, but they just gave it to the wrong person again. Fucking of course. Curious. They they write that dude a massive check, bro. But this is so this is the same issue with Marvel. Kevin Feige is like, we'll hire new people. It's like, yeah, okay, but then the institution's still there, it's still shit. Same mm -hmm. thing with Paramount. Paramount are like, we've got this great thing with Picard. 
So that's green light a bunch of new Star Trek stuff. Star, people clearly like Star Trek, but the institution around it is still the same. The people in charge are still the same, running actual Star, you know, yeah, the, we, the core of the Trek stuff. So fucking God. the fans, yeah, the first. The, Go ahead. The, I was just gonna say the first two seasons of Picard were so bad they were just like, ah, oh, this is the last season. Just just give it to Terry. Just let him do it. And they're just like hands yeah. off. And then boom, people actually like it. And now they're so over there scratching their heads, like what? Well, we had this discussion here before saying about how, you know, when 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 studios back off from, you know, when studio heads back off from a property, that's generally speaking when it's the best. Like Alien, for instance, was that. Predator, for instance, was that. You know, there's so many properties that, you know, when the studios backed off from things is so much better. And then they're like, oh, this made money. We'll get involved. We've got to make sure that it makes more money in the next time. It's like, no, it made money because you weren't involved. You absolute shit stains. Yeah. And and, and that's the reason why yeah. Yeah, that's the conversation. And it's one of the reasons why I think the the Joker 2 film is Mm. gonna be shit. Uh, I still think that's weird enough to know that they weren't getting involved in that, to be fair. We'll see. I mean it's that's pretty batshit crazy. I don't think the studio got involved. I who knows, man. Obviously, well, yeah, we will find out, won't we? But I just yeah, I can't I can't can't see them green light at that. 